Thanks to all of you for joining in uh, uh, by phone or webinar and folks here. And special thanks to, to David Corton for, for heading up this session. And there's been a great conversation among the presenters and among some of you participating leading up to this, which I think will continue after this session. But just a reminder to you all, this is a series of sessions that we've been holding about every six weeks for the last couple of years on the new economy transition, transition to a new economy. It's co-sponsored by the New Economy Working Group, which uh, Noel coordinates, and the New Economics Institute, which is directed by Bob Massey, uh, who will be joining us as well. I know a few more people are joining in right now, and, and we'll catch them in a, in a moment. Um, and I'm just going to, out of the conversation of the presenters, four intriguing questions have been raised that we want to get into in this session. But let me just say, say what it is that, that our hope is for this conversation. Um, we're calling it a new economics for a new economy. Um, uh, st I'll start with this observation that, that from a recent forum at the Union Theological Seminary, uh, organized by the Institute for New Economic Thinking, which is Rob Johnson's institute, Joe Stiglitz referred to economics as a faith-based religion. Uh, and uh, David pointed out that with the support of the New Economics Institute, university students across the U.S. and Canada have been holding uh, sessions on colleges around a series of issues, some of them around divestment, but several of them have opened up a challenge to the intellectual legitimacy and relevance of their conventional economics courses. Um, some of the sub-disciplines that are challenging the old paradigm of neoliberal or neoclassical or market fundamentalist economics are ecological economics, contextual economics. Um, and it's long been evident to some that the economic theories most solidly entrenched in academic and policy circles lack scientific and moral foundation and bear major responsibility for an economic system that self-organizes towards economic instability, extreme inequality, environmental destruction, and political corruption. Um, and to date, the most powerful interests served by these theories have easily deflected criticism, in part because there is no recognized alternative set of theories and tools to guide economic teaching and policymaking. So, this session is based on our sense that there are signs of public readiness for a serious rethink and retooling of the failures of existing theory and practice. And here are the four questions that we hope our five people will address in their opening remarks and that we will then have a good conversation about. One, do you think this is a moment of opportunity to expose neoclassical financial economics as faith-based and failed uh, based on an ideology posing as a science? And where do you see the most promising openings and compelling arguments? One. Two, what would be the es essential characteristics of a life-serving new economics paradigm? Three, as one example, and several of you have been leaders in the ecological economics uh, field, where do you feel ecological economics has gone wrong in its effort to provide a viable alternative? And are there lessons from this experience for those who now seek to create a true new paradigm economics? And finally, uh, uh, there's a chilling uh, uh, observation by Neva, who will be speaking in a moment. She refers to a research finding that those students who are morally or intellectually offended by the only selfishness as rationale lessons drummed into them in economics courses, quit studying economics. Well, those who have a higher tolerance for rules regardless of reality stay on. Does your experience confirm this conclusion? And if so, what are the implications for efforts to create a new economics for a new economy? That's certainly my experience of the 10,000 neoclassical economists at the World Bank right there. They, they're the ones who had a high tolerance for this stuff. Okay, so we're, we got five people. We've given them each six minutes. I'll like ring my glass right by the phone when the six minutes are up, just so you know. And you continue to speak then at your own peril of, you know, whatever. 